Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, I want to show you how we can create WebSocket in Nux 3. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so to begin with, we have index.view. So this is where we are having a simple HTML to click a button and that button will send a message to all the clients or all the clients connected on the WebSocket. And here, what I'm doing is, I have UUID package. So I'm just generating a new UUID whenever this particular instance of the client connects to the WebSocket. Now let's see first how the WebSocket server is created here and then we can get into more detail over this. So if I go to socket.ts, so what I have done is inside server, I have created a middleware folder and I have created a socket.ts middleware. Now what's gonna happen is every time someone visit any route on this website this uh, middleware will run and what this middleware is doing is so what we have here so first we are importing websocket and websocket server from ws package so i'm using this ws package which is websocket server uh, it's npm package you can also use socket.io i tried with socket.io but the problem was the server wasn't getting initialized through middleware so i have to use plugins and if i use plugins then it doesn't work on the cloud server because when you use plugins uh, when i say plugin it's by creating a plugin like this so it works if you have or if your cloud server provides multiple ports because currently where i have deployed this website i'll show you how it works on the cloud server as well where i have deployed this it only allows one port at a time so if you have such restraints then i would suggest creating a middleware and in this middleware what we are doing is we are just reusing our own nuxt server and we are opening just a url or a websocket server on the same server you could say now what's happening here so websocket and websocket server from ws and then we are defining a type for a client now this type is just that we want some global state to store all the connected clients i'll tell you why we are doing this as well so a global state to connect to see all the connected clients and the beauty of websocket server is that it keeps the connection live or it keeps the connection open so it doesn't close or it doesn't go through the whole life cycle of creating a connection and then responding again and creating a connection something like that websockets works differently than normal uh, http servers so here we have this uh, a client which is of type client it's going to be an array so all the clients that are connecting to our websocket server will be added over here and we have an instance of websocket server because we want to use this in other like files also let's say we have another api route and we want to use this one so we initiate the server instance here and so that we can use it anywhere now to use it anywhere we need to add them in global so these are just declaring the global types for these two properties and then we use global to add them in as a global property now this is not needed actually we can remove this okay so what's happening here so first we are initializing the websocket server now we are initializing this assuming that no other instance has been initialized for that websocket server okay because we just want one instance so we see okay if it's not in the global then we initialize it and for that we need to use this websocket server there we are passing this current server instance and we can get it so if you have a middleware you get the event inside event you have node there is response object there is socket and inside socket you have the server so we are saying okay use our server to create this websocket server once you create that websocket server then you can listen for the events and what are those events well okay let me remove these comments also they are not needed uh, they just did a lot of trial and errors to make it work <laughs> so here we have so whenever there is a connection to this server to this websocket server this function will run this function here now what is this function doing is this function is simply adding all the clients to the set of clients okay so what's happening is as soon as someone connects we say okay send the message to the client that you are connected and then whenever client sends a message so you have only these events in websocket server you have connection and you have message and there is also like two three like that's where 
I feel like socket.io might be useful because you could pass custom messages, like custom, in this case, I'm using message as a string for that event or namespace you could say, but in socket.io, you could pass custom namespaces, but anyhow. So here we have socket and on this particular message, like whenever there's a message from the client, we need to run a function. So what's the message? Well, the client will be say, sending the UUID that we have initialized here, over here. And how does this work is, whenever the client connects, the client can send to the server a message using the onOpen function. But then as soon as the client connects, so what's happening here is client is connecting to the server, server is telling the client you're connected and client is after connection on successful handshake, a client is sending the message again that add me in your lists. Now, this is just one of the way of adding clients in the list. You, if you have a database, then things are different, but this is just one of the way. So we are adding the client in the list by using this client.push. And what we are doing here is over here, we are checking for all the connected clients, okay? all the connected clients to this server. And we see, okay, if the client which is connected is equal to the one who sent the message, okay? So let's say if I send the message, then this client from all the connected clients will be the socket that has sent the message because we are listening for that particular instance who is sending the message. And we are looking individually for each of the socket. So through any socket, we get the message. We see, okay, if the socket and the client or the channel, something like that, if they are same, okay, perfect. And if their ready state is open, so are they open for connection? In that case, we add the client in our client's global state over here. And how do we add it? We set a UUID that is being sent from the client. So this message, this message will be the UUID. Now this message will be a binary string. So we need to convert it into a normal string. So we say, okay, message dot to string. Then we say, okay, the send function, because we will need the send function to send messages to other clients. So this is gonna be, it's gonna take in some message and then it will just pass the message using client dot send. Now this client dot send will be through this client because each WebSocket server clients have a message of sending data and the ready state, which will be this ready state. And once this client is, once we have the clients list, we rewrite the client list or we overwrite the global client list with the new clients. And at the end, when we have this thing done, like this function, we also add to our global WebSocket server, this WebSocket server, this one. Okay, now once this is done, let's go back to the index.view. Now what's happening here? As soon as the client is connected, now I have taken this local storage key as something like this. You could use cookies, you could use headers. I tried with headers, it doesn't work for some reason. Cookies, um, it's a good way, but as I'm doing some, most of the things on client side, so that's why I'm using local storage. So I'm setting a connection key, hyphen the UID being created over here. Now I'm doing this because when you test it on your own computer using two different browser windows, your local storage or even your cookies, if they have the same key, they will get overwritten. So that's why this satisfies for connecting on the same browser as well as connecting on the different browsers or different computers. Now, the problem here is you just need to be sure or just need to be careful that if you refresh the page, this will be written again. So if you are in production server, you just need to put something like this. If you're in dev server, you need to do something like this. So local storage or set item, we set the UID and then we send to the socket or our server through our socket. We send back to the WebSocket server that, okay, this is the UID. So that goes again back inside this message because whenever there is a message, it will go over here or whenever something comes from the client, it will go over here. And then in the client, when the client send that ID, we just push it over here. Yeah, we just said, okay, if these, like, as I said before, so this function runs after that event happened from the client side. So if the socket and client are same, add them. Next, we also listen for the messages from the server. So on the first instance, the WebSocket server from here, 
they're going to send socket dot send connected so as soon as the client connects so we can see the connected message over here and on close if we want to close the connection or something happens to the server that when the connection is closed from the server side we say disconnected now if you want to close the connection then we need to send back the request to the server ask them to remove the client from the list and need to do things manually for sometimes okay so this fixes the problem for connections and here if you notice i have a plugin now this plugin you don't need to register it it's a client side plugin but if you want it you can always go into nuxconfig.ts inside this you can create a plugins uh, array or set the plugins and then your plugin uh, path in my case it's plugins websocket.client.ts you might have different things so let's remove them ideally you don't need it now here what we are doing is we want the client side websocket so there are two one is a server instance one is the client instance now this websocket is inbuilt browser websocket every browser has an inbuilt websocket so what we are saying here is if it's a server side render like because first in render will be server side render so for that we just don't do anything we just go back because these are client side functionalities and if you run on the if you don't have this it will throw an error because of course you're running client side functionalities on server it will throw an error <laughs> so what we are doing here is we are first set checking the protocol of the url so is this on https or is this on http because if this on https you need to use websocket secure or websocket server secure if it's not on https then you need to have the protocol of just websocket server, uh, server like ws so here we are creating a socket which is a client side socket and we are saying okay that will be a new socket with this protocol in this protocol and the current location of the url so we are it's just reusing as we are using our url so if my domain is localhost colon 3000 so this url will be something like this ws localhost colon 3000 if i'm on some cloud server let's say example.com then this url will be example.com because my example.com will be on https and then we are just sending it back or we are providing it to all the components so that from all the components we can use this socket the client side socket awesome now next thing is going back to index.view here again so we have this socket instance then we have the uid etc etc that's all done and then on this button click and message we send a message what message we send we make call to an api request which is send message.ts now this is different this is not a middleware this is a proper api route there we send the message we want to send so currently i'm sending a random mac number and then i'm telling the sender who is the sender because we don't want to send the message back to the sender we want to broadcast it to everyone who is not the sender so let's go back to the send message in this api here we are getting the sender and then from the list of clients which will be our global clients global clients like this global this dot clients to each client we check okay if that client id equals to the sender id if it's not equal that means they are different so that's great this matches if the client is in open state that's great then we just send a message and that message will be broadcast to everyone except the sender so let's test this and see how it looks okay. so i have two instance on this so i have deployed this website on render uh, if you try to deploy on Firebase, it won't be of any use because Firebase is a cloud function and cloud functions are not really made for WebSocket servers. On Netlify, it might work. Uh, I have give, I given, I have given a try over there, but it just didn't work for me. For you might work. Uh, Versal, as I read online, it says that it won't work. So I didn't even bother to give it a try. So I tried on Render. So Render is kind of substitute of Heroku or alternative for Heroku, you could say. Okay, so let's refresh this. As soon as we refresh this, you'll see the client is connected. Refresh this, the client is connected. So our, if I go to the code, so this is happening from this uh, socket.ts. As soon as someone connects, the socket sends the message and we catch that message in our index.view over here. Whatever is the message, we catch it. And we set it over here as a state. So let's send something from here. There we go. It's reflected here. Let's send something from here. 
it's reflected here you will see it's not reflected to the one who sends it one more time okay and that's great so that's all in this video hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button if you feel this video is worth sharing with your network please do share with your network and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel see you in the next video till the next time goodbye